I started out as a muscle physiologist. I wanted to know how muscles are organized. And then I realized, after a period of time, like I'd love to tell my colleague that I team teach with who's a muscle biologist, that muscles are stupid. So here are our questions. What's the anatomical substrate underlying coordinated behavior? I'm going to show you some really boring neuroanatomy slides. Neuroanatomists are the biggest nerds you'll ever meet in your life. How does the state know what's going on? So how do we know we're slipping on the ice? And then how do we adjust the plan? And how do we develop? I have no idea why I have this frog there, but it's just, I just thought it was funny as hell, too. Um, and what we're doing now is how does that plan develop? You ever, I know you guys have done this. You throw a ball for a little kid to catch, and it hits him in the chest, and then he does this, right? And we all laugh at him, which is kind of cruel to laugh at small children. But it's because the development of the coordinated behavior hasn't taken place yet. It drives me crazy sometimes. You'll see. Parents wanted to get their kid to walk too early, and I just want to scream at them, going, the corticospinal tract is not developed yet, you moron. That kid's not going to walk without it. So sometimes development is the fact that those nerves are innervating. But also, think about our frogs. Those tadpoles have about two days to figure it out. Kids, well, I don't even, I don't have kids, what, a year and a half? When did, they, when did kids start walking? About a year. About a year. About a year. So, I mean, how easy is it? You had a year to figure this crap out. Frogs have two days, or they die, because they can't eat. So, kids have it easy. Here's the brain stem in the human, and here it is in the frog. You can see that the frog is about 90, well, I shouldn't say 90 percent, 75 percent brain stem. And what humans have done is they've developed all this crap on the outside, which is this. So, frogs have a very tight, they're, they're not terribly social critters, and humans have all this wrinkly stuff on the outside. But if you peel this away, and what I'm interested in is very simple coordinated movement, sticking your arm out. You don't need all this stuff. What you need is the brainstem. And so we're going to stay down here for the rest of the day. So what do they tell you in undergraduate biology that muscles do? They allow movement. But this dude, every muscle is contracted. Therefore, what they told you must be wrong. Because all those muscles are contracted and he's not moving. So therefore, how do we move? What's the only other option? If for muscle contraction? Oh, muscle relaxation. So we turn off the muscles that we don't want contracted. So motor systems are much less about muscle contraction than they are not contracting the wrong ones. There are neurological issues. So we started trying to figure out how we're getting this feeding motor output here. We know where it comes from. And we're starting to kind of figure out some of these pathways, but we don't know what turns it on, and we don't know how it's modified. So, as the kid is learning to walk, it's constantly got to modify its gait so it doesn't fall over. And so this has been a huge focus of my effort. I, I'm an, a physiologist by training. I said, you know what, it'll take me a couple years, I'm going to pound out the neuroanatomy, it'll be easy, and I can get back to doing physiology. And 15 years later, I'm not even close to figuring out the anatomy. So, specifically, our questions. What turns on a behavior? What's the trigger? Okay, the gun goes off. We perceive the time to come out of the starting blocks. But what turns the muscles off and the other muscles on? Um, what information coordinates it and how is it anatomically organized? It sounds like a simple system. It turns out it's pretty damn hard. We draw these maps. I publish them. And then I get really irritated because all I'm doing is making boxes. And I hate making boxes because it's the psychological approach to understanding the nervous system. How do they interact? within the boxes, how does the sensory feedback go back to the brain? That's ultimately my big love, is how do we decide what information is important? You're walking down the mall, and, well, not like there's people in our mall, but imagine <laughs> we had a crowded mall, and you've got all this noise, you smell those really cool pretzels, which is the only good thing about malls, is they have soft pretzels, and you have all these different sensations, people are bump, bumping up against you, and suddenly you hear your name 100 yards away. Because we've been filtering everything else out. You guys have been sitting here for probably much too long. Um, and you've, for example, forgotten that your underwear is really wrinkled. Right? Because we ignore this. Imagine what your life would be like if you were constantly aware that things were touching your skin. Seriously, like clothing. It'd be horrible. What, you would be horrible. You'd want to strip. Yeah. 
you know, maybe maybe there's dudes on bath salts that rip all their clothes off and have something going for them. I don't know. Um, but that's one of the theories of autism, is that these kids are not able to filter. Sensory perception. Sensory filtering is, is, is impaired.